Guys, this is the pirate. Who calls themselves the pirate? What, does he have only one leg? Uh, he does actually only have one leg, yeah. He was in a really savage car accident when he was five and they had to amputate below the knee. There really is no way I could have known that. I mean, The Rock isn't called The Rock because his dad was crushed by a boulder. So how did this all come about? Um, well, well, we were working on lots of different film ideas and um, Joe Parham and Keith Akushi, the writer of the film, came to the festival idea and then we did a bit of research, uh, me and Damon Beasley, and then Claire Jones, who's the producer, got involved and then we came up with this festival idea and then we did a read-through and Joe Thomas read the script and was so funny that everybody insisted he was in it. That's that was my side of it. Yeah, that's like that's that's literally on Wikipedia. What you? <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, yeah, no, I, I, just, I sort of I knew I knew sort of Joe and Keith who were writing the script a bit, and um, I I really liked them, and I just thought it was a really good idea for a comedy, and uh, I just really got the part. I was just like, yeah, I just I know what this is. Uh, I know what this is. I know what this. Uh, I've had this experience, and 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 um, it was just um, a really really attractive project because of the uh well it's nice to really you know, work with Ian again yeah, and I like, mean if Joe hadn't done it I wouldn't have spoken to him again yeah. <laughs> so that was, and we're yeah, pretty close like, so yeah so yeah it's um you know there's that but that's fine yeah. and so um you know yeah just and moral blackmail made you do it yeah but I mean you know it's not full blackmail so it's fine <laughs> and um yeah just and just like brilliant cast like really really great people in it and um yeah it was uh it was just the, something that really really I was drawn to <laughs> That's not good. What the hell are you doing in my car? Oi! I'm gonna call the police! And in terms of kind of the practicalities of getting it done, because I know you did some shooting at real festivals. Yes. Was, was that important? Because obviously I imagine you could have put on your own and hired a bunch of extras, but it wouldn't have quite been the same. No, I don't I don't think you get that uh, scale if you do it. I mean, we, we did use we had a festival set that we did use for some of the scenes, but actually we did a, a you know, huge amount of filming at, at, at real festivals. And um, I think without that, you couldn't really, you just couldn't get that look. I mean, yeah. you wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't work. It's trying to get that sense across that you have at a festival where you just feel like something's moving all around you all the time. You know, I think we still think there's just people everywhere. There's music coming from different directions, different types of music and stuff. And it's very, very hard to get that across, you know, um, you get the scale of that across, I guess, on your own sort of set. So, yeah, we did a lot of filming and we cut some of it in and, you know, used, used bits in whole chunks as well. So, different yeah. different things. But, yeah, I think it was really important to... Because also it just looks like, you know, sort of rolling hills that disappear off and that sort of thing. I wanted to get all that sort of sense of it as well. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was incredible film at these festivals. I mean, they're, they're, they were... Uh, they have, like... They're such... There's such sort of incredible spectacles, like this this sheer mass of humanity that's in that, that, that's all in one place. You, they, they are so they are so unlike everyone else's normal life, and like you almost kind of you, you just sort of I kind of get get kind of butterflies in my stomach when I when I go to a festival because I'm I um, seeing like just that seeing that sort of yeah that mass of people is um, kind of awe inspiring in a way, and it was yeah it was amazing to kind of try and capture that for the film. Particularly British as well, because I mean, yeah. if you've been to European festivals, particularly American festivals, it's yeah. a very different feel to what yeah. you're really looking at here. Well, we were talking about Co Coachella. I was just complaining right? about Coachella, actually, yeah. Yeah, because you sort of, it seems much more sedate in a way, much more controlled, you know, Coachella. Like you can drink in this area, and this area is for dance music, and this area is for sort of yeah. other thing, you know, sort of rock music, I guess. Whereas, you know, the British festivals have much more of a sort of free flowing messiness about them. It's a sense that people have kind of almost running it themselves as well like it there's it, it's almost like it's just a kind of yeah like a little society that sprung up I mean, it's not perfect society <laughs> they've got some it's pretty they've got perfect. some sort of plumbing problems yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but um but there's there is that that sense that it's almost kind of self-sustaining and self-sufficient and like being in a little village if you go to glastonbury or something and um that it is yeah they're almost like a kind of yeah like a community a community of people that seems to function according to rules that are Slightly different to the real world, but kind of the same as well. Um, and I think for like my character Nick, initially he's like just baffled by it, and he's just like I sort of it's just everything that he hates basically. And the film was really about kind of starting out in that position, and then along the way meeting people, and then eventually being able to kind of abandon yourself to the kind of unbridled joyfulness and the euphoria that you can also experience at, at a festival. And I think like. 
um, that's why. I mean, I think that's what's interesting about festivals. You see, like, you see the worst aspects of people, and and you see, and you see the best aspects of of, of people as well. And um, not the very worst. No one's murdering anyone. No, no one's murdering anyone. I suppose what I really mean is just like. Just like to- torrents of oh, urine, torrents right? of urine. <laughs> like, like, sort of like I suppose the like, worst see, toilet habits of people. Is what you're no, saying. you see, I suppose you see like the base reality of lots of people, which is that like they shit a lot and they piss a lot, and it's got to go somewhere, and the, and, <laughs> and 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 also like there's just so many of them, and and there aren't proper roads, so you have the just people just walking through tents to get to places, and <laughs> so p- bits of it are just like <laughs> practical chaos, like logistical <laughs> chaos, but then at the other end there's something kind of cerebral and almost like a kind of rite of passage about them something something can something can happen to you where you almost kind of shed a layer of skin or something and you 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 realize something about yourself so that's kind of yeah that's sort of you, you use something based but also something kind of um something cerebral and almost spiritual about them once a friend of mine let this migma build her he got septicemia and he had to remove his whole penis just this bloody stump where well he used to be mm. Anyway, let's hit the road. It's a great cast. Um, yes. How easy was that to put together? It was, I mean, to be honest with you, it was quite, it wasn't too difficult. People were just really, really nice and really read the script and loved the script and sort of wanted to do it, I think. And, um, you know, yeah, I was, I mean, I still can't believe the cast and I can't believe I've got to spend time hanging out with these incredibly funny people. But everyone was just sort of, you know, everyone read it. I mean, Claudio Dirty. Read the script, thought it was brilliant, wanted to do it. Joe read it, wanted to do it. Um, Hamid and Nimishorn, who's fantastic, I think, as Shane. Um, it was, you know, I hadn't really seen his work before. It was brilliant working with him. And then, you know, people like Chris Gear and uh, Jermaine Clement, I've worked with before, and they were really nice and took time out to come and do it. So it's been, it was, I just feel delighted. And I, you know, can't believe the cast when I read it out. I'm like, oh, okay, amazing. Let's do this. <laughs> So great we can use a car for this. Well, this was your car. I don't have a car. Oh. You once told me that a true friend is somebody who would help you dispose of a body. I'm just asking you to expose a body. Get back here now! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We want to see cops! Oh, 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 oh. What's she not to do that? I saw magic Mike on a plane. Oh, 